The Westminster system, which is based on first past the post and a sort of centralised authority, needs to change. There is no question at all about that. And the problem with that centralised authority is it breeds arrogance and smugness. We've seen that in people like Nadine Dorries, the person who does nothing and expects to be elevated to the House of Lords. We've seen that in Pretty Patel, the person who allegedly has bullied people and remains in her job, although the evidence was provided. We've seen that in Suella Braverman, who stands at the dispatch box, bangs on about an invasion, who basically uh, endorses racism and, as a consequence, we've seen a rise in xenophobia, a rise in racism, and a rise in the discussions which some years ago would have been unthinkable, where entire communities of people are branded. We've seen that. And it's only a short while since the City of London was a beacon for foreign investment and for foreign workers to come here and champion the British way of doing things, clear laws, clear um, justice, clarity, the English language. That was one of our major exports. It is no surprise, really, that education has been a growth industry in the last 20 years. And now, under the present government and the previous government, and in fact I think it started with Mrs May, because Mrs May is the disease that has spread. Mrs May is the assumption that bureaucracy and paperwork and muddling around with the meanings of words will effect change. All it does is to create confusion and generate more paperwork because you have to explain what you've just said. So now, through that um, growth, that huge growth industry, no one's going to stop it because it actually provides a lot of employment for bureaucrats. Through that growth industry, we have cheapened our language and our brand. And whatever hope there was for Brexit, I didn't hope a great deal for Brexit, whatever hope there was, and I'm sure there was hope, and I'm sure there, there was a positive, has been squandered by playing around with words. We cannot be trusted. And now Suella Braverman wishes to introduce laws which contradict herself, which contradict the, which defy the international laws that we have undertaken to observe. So now we're going to define who and who is not illegal by the way in which they come to this country to claim asylum. And those people who we decide have come here illegally, we're going to reject, we're not even going to process. We've got a deal apparently with Albania to return people to Albania without processing, even should they claim asylum. This is against all international law. And we are further perverting reality by claiming that Germany has already done this. Germany has not. Germany has processed all the applications, rejected the majority of Albanians, but it has processed their applications. But um, Suella Braverman's plan is not even to do that processing. It is abhorrent. Now, at the moment, we have one and a half million people poised to strike or already striking, bringing our country to a standstill. We have a low wage economy which is partly why people are striking. Um, and we have a Conservative government that is in the blame game only. The problems we've got are because of the Ukraine, because of Covid. Well, yes, partly. Nobody wants to say they're because of Brexit, because nobody can quite bring themselves to utter the word or to even explain what advantages we've got from Brexit. I don't see any. Ukraine and Covid are a useful explanation uh, that we have imported our problems or our problems have been imposed on us 
from abroad with imported inflation because of Putin, with um, We've imported, uh, well, a standstill in the economy because of the, uh, because of COVID. But at the same time, the fastest vaccine, energy resilience, and so on. None of that is going to eclipse the PPA procurement problem, the deceit that is at the heart of government ministries. Matt Hancock, oh Gina. Give me a ledge B pencil with a rubber on it. And, um, you know, Matt Hancock is somebody who clearly had, um, had read or knew of Quinton Crisp's book, How to Become a Virgin. You know, you may have done the most dreadful things, but once you go on the telly, people cross the road and say, Oh, Mr Crisp, I saw you on the telly. Well, they're not going to do that to Matt Hancock, so Crisp's initiative no longer works. Matt Hancock wasted his time on I'm a Celebrity. And he defied the parliamentary convention that a person who is elected to Parliament will have the honour to represent his constituents. Mr Hancock clearly has very little honour left. And then we've got Kwasi Kwarteng's enormous package... It's not only that it uh, wobbled the market. It's not only that it was abandoned. It's that the Bank of England had to step in. And we wasted lots of money that could otherwise have been handed to the nurses, to the train um, drivers and so on. And there must be that question hanging over. Kwasi Kwarteng's package... Could have, been bet- could have been better used, could have been put to proper service. We didn't need to waste all that money. We wasted that money because of the stupidity of Truss and Quateng, the arrogance. Where does that arrogance come from? It comes from a centralised government that is so up itself it doesn't know which way to move. And at the same time, Truss, Truss, Um, had appointed somebody to the Northern Ireland office who could possibly have sorted out the Northern Ireland problem. And then she herself pulled attention, as was probably predictable. So there you've got it in a nutshell. What is going to happen to the present government? Well, it will fall. It will fall because it doesn't command the confidence of the entire Conservative Party. Will it fall... Before its term is up? Probably. Probably. Um, Is there anything good in the government? Well, actually, I think Rishi Sunak is a significantly better option than Liz Truss and always was. Is he a good option? Well, that's another question. Is there anybody better? I don't think we're going to find out. I think when this government falls, Keir Starmer will walk in to number 10.